Shaji KV. Can we please welcome him with a round of applause? A warm welcome to you, sir. And yes, over to over to you, sir, to take this forward. Thank you, sir, for joining. And for the audience here, uh, we work closely together. But uh, uh, I'm part of NABAR's IT advisory committee. And first time physically in person we are meeting, because last, most of the interaction happened in the last two, three years of time is uh, virtual in nature. So, sir, as we heard in previous discussion, so uh, we, we talk about the governance uh, part and increasingly the obligations from regulators are also coming from uh, the board members uh, and also the executive management towards the digitization happening, but more importantly for the security as well, right? So before we go to that, can you just, because you, uh, one is the NABAD and other is the oral innovation happen in the agriculture sector, and you also drive a lot of those innovations in rural uh, banking ecosystem as well. So can you just a little bit spend some time on how the transformations are happening, what it actually mean in terms of digitization in the segment that you deal in? Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, Nabad, many of you may be knowing that it's National Bank for Agriculture and Rural Development. Of course, uh, we deal with a sector where data is not proper. And uh, the generation of the data also, people who use the data or who generate the data may not be aware of uh, the technicalities involved and how to handle that, how to protect their privacy and such other things. So we have a very important role to play. Uh, right now, you know, uh, in uh, digital space, in the rural space, a lot of uh, institutions are there. And it is mostly driven, see, initially it was driven by the need of the government uh, to provide access to financial services. And that way, many of the public sector entities, the cooperatives, those uh, people have, uh, have, were there existing, but then they were largely following uh, digital uh, manual processes. So with the advent of a lot of uh, digitization uh, tools and such other things, uh, new entrants came into being and then uh, they, uh, see, they were actually skimming the system. So mm -hmm. what, what we wanted to do is that we wanted to enable the legacy institutions to, uh, to onboard into digital platforms. Uh, so, the, we have, first of all, we have to tell them that digitization cannot be a strategy, it's a business need actually. So, that, uh, no, that awareness needs to be created and they may not, this management of these institutions, these institutions are necessarily small and they may not have the wherewithal, first to understand the nuances, second thing, they, don't, they may not have the financial muscle uh, to, to enter into such uh, activities. So, so what, what we did was that actually, you know, we helped these institutions. Right now, we are in the middle of a massive digitization process, which uh, you know, we call it as uh, democratization of the core banking system. Uh, see, you, you may be aware of the cooperative societies which are there uh, in, in a nook and corner of the country. Around 100,000 of them are there. And the government of India intends to actually triple that maybe in another two years. So right now, all these entities are in the physical form. They are not, they are, uh, no, nobody knows what they are doing. And they, uh, a lot of rent seeking also is there. So government of India wanted to digitize this 100,000 involving around uh, 13 crore farmers involved in that. So we are spearheading that initiative, first of all. Uh, so so what, what we are intending to do is to digitize the first their processes and then help them build a data uh, warehouse type of thing and then upon that, all these analytical tools should be there so that uh, the cost of providing services, see, see essentially these are all high-touch uh, activities where uh, the cost of operations and, the, and consequently the cost to income ratios are very high. So what we intend to do is to reduce their transaction cost through digital tools, but then they themselves may not be capable of doing that. So government is providing money and we are spearheading the activity. So we are engaging with uh, many of these fintech companies uh, to, to work on, uh, to provide the near 
art of the uh, no, state of the art type of uh, technology. We, we, we may not be able to provide state of the art because first of all the capabilities were not, will not be there to, for them to handle. So we are doing that massive digitization program. That is one important initiative which we are doing. Second initiative of course is the agricultural loans. See, uh, rural is now synonymous with agriculture but no longer. Actually the, the, the composition of rural, if you see, almost around 35 to 40 percent of the income is only coming from uh, agriculture. Remaining are from non-agricultural activities. So there is a need for uh, you know, uh, making it agri to agri-businesses. For that, you know, digitization of the agriculture processes also need to be there. So we are in the process of uh, digitizing many of their value chains. So agri-value chain digitization is another activity which we are doing and, uh, and then uh, so some sort of you know, this, uh, uh, innovations need to happen uh, in terms of uh, uh, financial products also. For that, uh, uh, value chain digitization is a must. Value chain exists and we may track that value chain, but then digitizing that value chain and making available uh, the flow of cash uh, and escrowing that cash flow digitally uh, so that financial institutions will be comfortable uh, to provide products uh, en encompassing three or four nodes of the value chain. So that is one activity which uh, we are trying to do. And, uh, and, and then uh, we, we are also uh, in the process of the, you know, Central Bank has announced uh, Central Bank Digital Currency. So applications of that, the purpose boundedness of this, uh, 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 no, uh, this CBDC, whether it can be made as a, a tool uh, to reach the unreached. See, uh, around 30 percent of the farmers are landless farmers yeah. who don't have any data. KYC data is not there. They don't, uh, they don't have proof for cultivation. So through purpose boundedness of the digital currency, whether we can reach them. So that is one activity which we are trying to do. And in our, uh, you know, we are doing a lot of developmental activities like watershed development, uh, the tribal development. These activities requires a lot of uh, geospatial data also to come in. So there also digitization is happening. And then, uh, of course, the uh, self-help group movement. Uh, with around 1.2 crore uh, uh, groups formed involving around 40 percent of the uh, rural women uh, in the country. So there also we are trying to do some digitization. So these are broadly the activities which we are doing. Uh, we, we hope that uh, the efficiency and the transparency and the accuracy of providing uh, the, in, uh, the services will improve and as a result rural prosperity will improve. Yeah, and this is very important for the people here, right? Just imagine uh, when we talk about digital, we always talk about payment, right? But there are a lot of sectors like agriculture, right? Um, uh, if we digitize the rural economy, agriculture, is, as uh, talked about, is only 30-35% of the overall rural economy, right? And there are many other value chain, basically, which we are able to digitize, and we are able to bake them into the formal transaction ecosystem. Uh, it definitely improves the efficiency, definitely improves the... Uh, transparency definitely creates new possibility for that but one of the key thing which happens is also make sure that they are economically active economically formally active uh, agents of the uh, economy basically and if they are there like that the other possibility do get open for them basically transactions getting digitized means their credit capability or credit uh, uh, that they can get it from the banks could significantly improve for that basically and doing that kind of a uh, intervention and Navadi is a, such a sphere leading kind of organization who is doing this intervention all across the country and just just reflect on the number 13 crore 1.2 crore movements which is doing this self help group basically so with this uh, thing we, the lot of transition that we'll see uh, in terms of the how the economy rural economy will work uh, from now and in the process, the fintech provider, the, the, the agri-tech companies, which are uh, engaged with NABAD on this agenda, basically, apart from the entire big ecosystem, technology ecosystem working in this. So, and then uh, as a chairman, you, when you are uh, leading this digitization, and I had been engaged some part of it, basically. So, uh, the, the segment or the beneficiaries here are a, a ruler, economy, farmers for that matter, significantly, right? And they may, may not be too much aware about the, the issues that could go wrong with them, uh, the, the security and also the, their rights in the digital space, basically, right? So there are significant credible steps that you have been undertaking to make sure that while doing that, security uh, is ingrained in a design and uh, there is a process for set up for that. So can you just dwell uh, as a chairman of the NABAD how do you see in that uh, the role that security is playing? Cyber security. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, see, uh, now with the rural financial institutions increasingly adopting or rather they are coming from… See, they, are, they were having legacy CBS system which is uh, intranet type of thing. When they… when these transactions are made available in the public tech platform, then we need to be sure about uh, these security aspects, their privacy aspects and all which they themselves may not be aware. See, for example, this uh, is already around… around 60 cyber incidents have happened involving close to around 250 crore of money. So that means, you know, these people uh, may not be aware of that, but then, see, even the latest, uh, you know, cyber uh, security incidents like uh, man in the middle type of things, spider attacks, all these things are now are coming to the rural space also because they are they are the actually sitting ducks so we need to uh, we need to now make sure that as they digitize and as they uh, do the transactions uh, uh, in the digital space uh, the cyber security aspects need to be uh, properly drawn up so for that first of all you know we we are now sensitizing the managements because individually these people may not maybe may have to be you know investing the money individually which they may not be able to capable of they are not able to uh, 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 be aware of what technology is available and all. So in that count, we are actually trying to make a rural back office, a shared service entity type of thing, where we will make available this, uh, these tools on a, in a common platform, uh, and, and then it's, it will be a CBS agnostic type of thing, and this can be uh, seamlessly integrated to their whatever uh, transactions or digital uh, modes they are using. So, so we are already in talks with, uh, with the, the, the cooperative banks, especially, uh, and also with the help of the Government of India, because Government of India, what they want is that as, as we digitize and uh, we have to make uh, available the state-of-the-art payment solutions to the rural people. So, in that way, they can increase their uh, digital trail, their uh, the trail they can increase and their visibility and even their credit history or transaction history can be made available. So, to encourage them to onboard to that and with, uh, with a certain, uh, you know, uh, ensuring about the cyber security and all, where the common service model is what we are trying to do. And we are now setting up a shared service entity where we will make available all the latest security tools and, and to all the uh, entities, including uh, the 100,000 of uh, pr primary societies which I mentioned, and then we have scheduled cooperative banks, around 360 of them. Uh, so they are in, uh, in bits and pieces they are in, uh, implementing, but then uh, on a concerted way, uh, we, will, we will be uh, making available the system at the cost-effective manner. That is one thing. Second thing is that cyber security liability insurance also, is a, once an incident happens, uh, the liability should not accrue to these uh, banks. So we, are, uh, we have actually helped them float a common uh, cyber security, in, you know, uh, RFP uh, policy for that, and we reduce the cost because of the economies of scale. We could reduce the cost of uh, that security. That also, that is a common service which we've already done, and and then, uh, you know, uh, the, we are also giving them the roadmaps. Uh, uh, see, we are the uh, supervisors and regulators of this. Uh, cooperative entities and it is our duty to ensure that you know, they are made aware of these threats for that we will be interpreting all the certain uh, attacks uh, whatever uh, no, uh, uh, informations we are getting we will interpret them in a way in which they can understand better and also we will interpret the regulatory guidelines of the RBI and help them uh, you know uh, implement that and then monitor constantly because as supervisors it is our duty to do the both the offset monitoring and the onset monitoring of whatever compliances they are doing. Uh, for that process, what we have done is that we have also equipped ourselves with uh, uh, tools, uh, technologies, tools. You are aware of that, the super soft, the supervisory software. We have digitized that, and in a digital manner, we will be able to uh, gather information and also track the progress of compliances so that nothing is lost out. So, all these counts, on all these counts, we are now trying to equip them. Uh, with all the tools so that they can compete uh, with, uh, with, uh, with the other players, especially the non-banking finances uh, companies are coming with the latest technology tools, uh, with a lot of innovat innovations and all. Uh, and one more thing is that when, once they do that individually, their cost to income ratio is huge. Their, their cost incurred for, uh, uh, for, for generating, uh, say, uh, one rupee will be higher at around, say, uh, 70 to 80, whereas the norm is around, say, the 40 to 50. So, so, to reduce the cost to income ratio and to reap the benefits of the economics of scale, all these activities will help them. And then it will give them a confidence that somebody is there to help them out 
to uh, to uh, to actually interpret or analyze uh, whatever they are inter uh, they are intended to do so that they will have a full confidence in pushing those uh, digital products to the digital, uh, to the to the rural people and then uh, as i said earlier you no know, the cyber threat guidelines you know we also issue guidelines to these banks so we are not stopping at just simply issuing the guidelines we are now helping them uh, set up uh, all these capabilities so that uh, no, they can, the implementation also is near perfect. Yeah, and you talked about so many different things and so many interesting. So one is the democratizing access to this capability. Other is common service uh, uh, capability you are creating so that they reduce the cost of uh, using the security capability and also regulation and at the same time monitoring, supervising, then again uh, helping them, handholding them basically. And in the process basically help them to uh, transform from the way they have been doing physical mode to the digital mode and then achieve the overall goal of uh, agro, uh, digital agro or rural economy basically. And in that process as a chairman of the organization because people here would like to understand uh, somebody is leading such a big uh, organization which has so much impact and that impact is such a spread all across the country, right? So, what kind of processes that you have set up to help you? Uh, one is to understand what needs to be done. Other is uh, probably push the needle to the next level and also monitor the progress and make sure that it is governed to the level of the expectations of a regulator and also overall expectations of the society. So, uh, first of all, we should now develop our own digital capabilities. In-house capabilities need to be developed. So, NABAD, uh, since we were dealing with, uh, with a sector which was predominantly uh, not digital or uh, less digital, see, you know, agriculture contributes to around, say, 18 percent of the economy, and rural will be around 35, and which is predominantly uh, no, uh, not uh, technology uh, intensive, it is not. So, so that 35 percent is what the economy which we are touching. So. We used to deal with, and then the, the stakeholders in this sector were not comfortable in using digital means as well initially. So now what we are doing is that internally we are digitizing it. We are in the process of uh, building a data warehouse, uh, which is meant not for not for NABAD but for the sector. So in that data warehouse, we have to ensure that the data coming in, uh, the access control should be proper, and the data which is coming in should be proper verified, and it should be in the appropriate structure so that it can, it, it is amenable to whatever uh, modifications and massaging of with, uh, with latest tools and all are possible so that the MISs can be generated out of that. So for that, the data warehouse plus we are also digitizing the automated data flow from the, these institutions which we supervise. Uh, so we are, first of all, we are issuing the guidelines and equip them to implement the guidelines and then we also develop digital capabilities to extract this uh, data in an automated form so that the data coming in are not garbages and which can be used properly and we can be confident about the data which is coming in. And for that, I know we, we are also uh, activating our own uh, you know, uh, MIS tools. Uh, with latest technology and then as I said earlier we are uh, using the supervisory software with the first in, first of this kind in India where we have digitized the whole of uh, supervision of banks and uh, we are now uh, two rounds of uh, supervision so supervisory examinations is over that means around two years have elapsed and we have now got enough data on which we have we can do some analytics on, on that so we are in the process of doing that then we are also we are also uh, you know uh, act, uh, doing with the, so you know the climate resilience is one important thing which is affecting the sector because we have to ensure that uh, the the income stability should be there for that resilience to climate events will be very much important so data in climate resilient agriculture and rural sector that is one thing which we are uh, looking upon and we are actually partnering with various agencies including UNDP like agencies and also uh, credit rating agencies have huge data in, especially on credit so uh, data on climate resilient agriculture one platform tech platform as a public digital public good we are we are setting up and and also uh, no we, we as I said earlier, the value chain, the value chain data is also very important mm -hmm. in, in, in terms of improving the visibility and improving the uh, penetration of financial products. And uh, you may be aware of one of, on another initiative of Government of India where digitizing the whole of agriculture uh, sector in the country, the Agri-Stack yeah. initiative of the Government of India. So we are an active partner to that. Uh, so in that, 
if, so for those of you who are not aware, it contains three registries. One is the farm registry, which is essentially the land, digitized land records. And then the crop registry, the, on the land, what type of crop they are uh, growing. So that also is, made, is being made available digitally. And the farmer registry, where it is a KYC enabled, Aadhaar enabled farmer. So we can link an Aadhaar with a person, then uh, that KYC of that person is done. And if we link that person with the land, then it can be proved as he's a farmer, and then uh, the land is linked to the crop, then we're cultivating some crop. So, and then uh, we, we, using geospatial technologies, we can see what type of crop is growing, what will be the likely uh, productivity of that crop, what diseases, or any climate events forecasting, or a lot of advisories can be built on that. This is, in, in short, what is AgriStack is. So, since agriculture is a state subject, so each and every state has to develop that and own the data. That data has to be owned by the state governments, not at the central government. But then central government, what they can do is that they are now issuing the common frameworks, uh, standardizing the crop registry. See, for example, rice. Uh, in one part of India, it will be called by one name. In the other part, it will be called by another name. So technologically, it will be challenging for us to uh, locate. You no, know, it's the same rice which is growing in South India, <laughs> maybe in Kerala yeah. and yeah. in Punjab. So that is rice. But then, the, uh, the, when, once the data is not clear or data is not uniform, then we'll not be able to aggregate the data properly, and wrong uh, decisions can will be taken out of that data. So that crop registry we have standardized so far. And then for each crop, every district, for those of you who know banking, there is a scale of finance. The scale of finance is determined at the district level depending on the variety of the crop, the agroclimatic conditions. All these things are now available to the district in a physical form. So now what we have done is that there is a registry of scale of finance so that any bank uh, accessing uh, that data, they can centrally access that data and decide in a digital form the eligibility of a particular farmer uh, who is growing that. So that is made available so that uh, the, the, uh, the cost to provide such loans or credit underwriting process is simplified to a large extent. So all these initiatives we are taking so that uh, the, the cost of uh, providing services is reduced so that the ultimately the, borrow, the uh, farmer who is accessing these services are accessing at the optimum cost. The co in, in fact, he should not... Uh, no, he should, he should not spend much in terms of his time, in terms of his uh, uh, no, uh, money, such other things to access these services. So, uh, so in short, there is a silent revolution which is happening. Yeah. And once uh, that stack is getting integrated, uh, so already 14 states are now onboarded. Other states are in the different uh, stages of onboarding. So all these things will digitize the whole of agriculture sector in the country. Plus, the agri SMEs and such other things will be integrated. So the, we, are, we have the agri infra fund process where the agree to agribusiness transformation is also being happening. Yeah. So these are all large initiatives. And then since actually, uh, I think 2022, right, and the AI becomes such a talk of Tom, very technical session, and we, we also discuss AI, use of AI in cybersecurity, and we are also concerned about AI. Are you making any plan for adopting these large language models in, in entire ecosystem? And if you are, are there some worry associated with that which you are mindful of or you are questioning of? So, yeah, so we have to move in that direction because if you want to provide uh, you know, uh, flawless services or flawless, flawless access to digital services, we need to move towards that direction. So, uh, so one thing is that you know, we, we need to now process, you know, understand these things properly. And uh, we need to have internal capabilities uh, to, to set up these things. So, so we may have to co-opt, because right now, uh, being an uh, institution with all legacy issues, we may have to co-opt a lot of expertise from the field for all these activities, which we are in the process of doing. We are engaging uh, with, uh, with, with many entities outside NABAT as well. And also we have an IT advisory committee where all these uh, activities are being screened. And, uh, and, uh, and, and this IT advisory committee actually is advising the board of NABAT on, on, and the management of NABAT on what, what is the way forward, the best way forward. So all these things are in the, are, are in the making and, and I'm sure uh, the, as we transform in the digital world and we, we internally will transform and also for the sector will provide uh, the tools uh, for the sector to act upon. Because these people are, the rural people mostly are not aware and not capable of uh, accessing these services. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, I mean, these are very broad issues and many of these, in fact, this, this area itself is very unknown to the professionals working and being in this room, basically, right? 
and thank you for coming and really sharing these experiences here so that we as a community or technologists see agriculture, rural economy as one of the important area for us to also contribute uh, in terms of what are the competence capabilities that we can bring to the table. Uh, you are chairman of the institution, right? And uh, there are most of the people here are the security professional, right? And they always have this challenge of engaging with their board, their chairman, their executive management, and talking the language where they can understand and they can commit to security. So what, what you can advise to the people who are actually neck down in security and they come to you or somebody like you and sometimes the conversation may not be that efficient and effective and people would like to know from the chairman of the bank what should they do, which is a better way to, com to, to communicate with you, to converse with you and get your attention to this and get your commitment for this. So, this is an interesting question. Actually, what our advice will be that, you no, know, see, the management uh, of any of these such institutions may not be strictly aware of the jargons yeah. uh, of what you use. So, you have to first de-jargonize whatever yeah. you are trying to tell. Second thing is that you should understand potentially what all the use cases you can have in that particular company. For that, you need to understand this institution a little deeper. For that, you, know, you need to engage with uh, those people who are actually uh, doing uh, these things or the stakeholders. Actually, we should look at the stakeholders, what is their problem and uh, then whether this institution can provide the solution and in that process, how we can help that institution. So that is the way in which uh, you have to present your case and, and, and we are now most of the public, because we being the largest DFI in the country, we are publicly owned, that is government owned and, and we are also open to in engagements with fintech companies, fintech and also tech companies, agri-tech, startups and such other things. For the process, we also have set up certain funds for that. So we are actually uh, incubating a uh, lot of startup ideas as well. You may, may not be aware that we, are, we have set up seven agri uh, rural business incubation centers across the country in partnership with uh, uh, agricultural universities, IITs uh, and IIM as well. So, seven ac uh, across the country we have done and close to around, uh, say around 60 such incubative companies also have come up. We actually, what we tell is that the problem statements we provide to them and they come out with some technical solutions and we'll try to incubate them and pre pre prepare a business model, model for them. That is one aspect of uh, frugal innovations which are happening. Second aspect is that we, we are also having a venture capital fund. Uh, where uh, the NAB Ventures, you can search the internet for that, which uh, we, we are actively looking for opportunities to uh, handhold those rural tech companies, those who are rural, those who have uh, solutions for the rural issues. So we want to incubate the, or rather help them in providing the venture capital. It can be a capital, venture equity or even venture debt. Uh, and, 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 and we have actually incubated around 25 or rather helped 25 such uh, portfolio companies for various uh, solutions, including cyber security part, uh, some adverse type of uh, companies are also there where we are a uh, no, investor in that company. And now, going forward, we are also setting up another fund that is uh, a blended capital fund, uh, 750 crore worth fund along with Government of India for helping uh, low, uh, no, companies uh, in the early stages of innovation, including uh, in the cyber security aspect. Yeah, I mean, so this such is opportunities very, yeah, also you can yeah. make use of. Yeah, but these are very important, right? And, and in, in public sector organization, I have seen Nabar, you want to have startup policy, and they have startup strategy as well. And with that, uh, one is supporting and helping startup in the segment that Nabar work in. And others are also, they have policy to probably procure solutions from startups as well. I think this is a, I have not seen in many of the public sector organizations such kind of papers being put together. So why I mentioned about such yes. things is that you know, once we evaluate a company and invest there, yeah. then uh, our own problems you c we can post to these companies yeah. and solve. And then we'll have a, you know, you, you'll have a first right of refusal type of thing. So yeah. that's a business proposition for you as well. Yeah. So, uh, sir, me, this is really thank you for really touching on so many different areas and also there are startups here and we also the other data security council of India, we work on uh, overall national ecosystem for cyber security startup and we certainly want to see, to engage with your NAB venture and other initiatives to see how can that help our startup ecosystem in, in the area that you work in basically. So this, this is a very interesting conversation but uh, we have some time if anybody has any question or comment and, uh, so that another two, three minutes you can spend on that. Anybody? Yeah,
understood. What yeah, <laughs> no, yeah, Dr. Vats or anybody? Yeah. How do we reach out to uh, the startup? Yeah. So, uh, for uh, reach out, reaching out to the startups, means yeah, you have the startup uh, initiative. How how some startup can reach can out? Can avail of this? Yeah, uh, yeah. Whatever. Okay. Okay. So uh, you can apply through our website. Uh, you are, uh, or you can approach our NAV Ventures. There is a mail available. There is a website there. Uh, so uh, you, I mean that you, you, I understand that you are a startup, or uh, or you are interested in. Uh, getting equity support from NABAR, that's what you... Yeah, so yeah. Uh, I'm a startup, I'm working on a concept uh, which uh, solves problem of unclaimed assets, which is also a big rural problem. Unclaimed assets? Yeah. Can so you expand that further? So, uh, typically we have four or five bank accounts, multiple assets, liabilities, insurances, PPF, PF, shares, and okay. when a person expires, family oh, okay, loses okay. out on 30, 40 percent of that understood. thing. Right. Otherwise, it will go to the deaf fund yeah, of it RBI. Yeah, it goes to unclaimed and uh, dormant accounts. So, that's so, hard legacy. And we're also working on soft legacy of relationships and networks. Okay, okay. So, yeah. what you have to make out is that your business case may be applicable across the country, but you have to make a use case specific for the rural so that Nabat can chip in with this. That, that is the That is the business case you have to make it uh, when you present it to yeah. NAB Ventures or NABAR's proprietary investment team. Uh, so in that case, so see, we understand that uh, whatever uh, you know, ideas are there, it, it, it is applicable across the country. And then uh, specific to rural is what our mandate is. So you have to make uh, that pitch with us, that is one thing. Second thing is that you know, our investment team, you can uh, send a mail either to chairman at NABAR or RG with your business case. And then we'll refer that to uh, the team concerned, either to the NAB Ventures, which is our subsidiary, or through our investment team from which who are making our proprietary investments from our balance sheet. So that they also can help you out of this. Sure, sir. Thank you. Yeah. And really, thank you, sir. And there is no better way of concluding uh, this financial security conclave than you being here and really, uh, uh, really closing this seminar on the note to really expand and taking us to the paradigm and taking us to the plane which probably most of us are not really exposed to. And thank you for your time and thank you for coming here. It's a learning for me also yeah, yeah. because you know, while coming over here, you know, there is a need for, for attracting talent to rural sector. Yeah. Their issues. Yeah. So now most of the talent is now focused on solving issues of the solving urban. Mostly and, urban. And India is getting you know, more uh, no, urbanized in the rural areas. Yeah. So, with the reverse uh, actions also should happen. From the, we have to push rural people to urban rather than pushing urban people to rural. So, in that count, I'll invite you all. Uh, we are regularly doing some hackathons also, yeah, yeah. On, uh, focusing on. See, for example, there was an initiative called ONDC, the Open Open Network of yeah, Digital yeah, Commerce. Yeah. We are the first investors in ONDC to support that because we saw that an opportunity for the rural, uh, say, farmer producer organizations to get onboarded their visibility to be improved and such other things. So you can also think about, see, you will have technology solutions, but then think about the applications in the rural areas and come to us. We are there to help you out. We will certainly, sir, take this opportunity and I will also take the opportunity of this forum that uh, as a DSA and NASCOM ecosystem that we are building at national level, we will like you to come more to our platform as well so that we instigate these people to see the problems and issues that you are facing. Thank you, sir, for spending time and uh, such a great uh, way of closing the SI Financial Security Conclave. We do have innovation box, startup competition after this, but as a conference, we are closing with this basically. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much.